Hello. In this tutorial, I'm going to review InkPad. InkPad is a vector-based drawing application for the iPad. Uh, it is made by uh, uh, Taptrix Incorporated uh, and Steve Sprang. He's the same individual who developed brushes for the iPad. You've probably heard of that. Um, InkPad is essentially a tool uh, that is similar to what you might find on your computer if you're a graphic designer or illustrator. Um, comparable programs on a computer would be Adobe's Illustrator. Uh, and we'll start this up here. So we're going to go ahead. It opens up to uh, select drawings. That's essentially the window that saves your uh, work that you've done up to this point. I'm going to hit the plus sign on the top right side and create a new drawing. You can give me a uh, paper size. I'm just going to leave it at letter. Over on the left hand margin you see your tools here and uh, you've got a arrow selection tool which is currently selected. The tool right below that is the uh, also a selection tool but it's for selecting multiple objects. Again these um, drawings are not pixel based, they're mathematically created. So when you draw something it's they're se separate vector objects. Below that I have the uh, pen tool and the pen tool draws um, similar to vector based drawing applications. It creates Bezier uh, curves and you can um, do a pretty nice job of tracing uh, objects and we'll show you how that works actually with the brushes tool uh, in the demo a little bit later. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Below the pen tool you've got um, a tool that allows you to add additional points on your line so if you draw a path or a line you can actually uh, put more more uh, points on that path so that you can edit the uh, the path or the line a little bit more. Uh, right below the uh, add points tool you've got scissors and that's for um, cutting an object and you can uh, cut an object uh, any place that you have points. So if we draw a circle, and we'll do this a little bit later too, if you have a circle and you want to cut that circle in half you would just uh, hit the uh, points at the uh, midway sections on that circle, uh, crossways in this case, and it would uh, cut that particular circle into two separate objects. Right below that you have a brush tool, and the brush tool even though it looks like a pixel based uh, tool, it's actually a vector based tool too, and it's a, a nice way to uh, uh, create a vector image out of something that is uh, uh, something that you might want to trace, like a photograph. And that's another part of this example that we're going to be doing. The eraser tool is right below that. It will erase parts of your picture. You've got your shape tool and there's different types of shapes you can select and create uh, shapes. You have a text tool and the text tool allows you uh, very uh, similar to like a uh, page layout program. It allows you to change uh, text. It allows you to put text on a curve or on a path. You can do all kinds of things you would normally do in a vector-based drawing application. Eyedropper tool allows you to select colors. And then finally at the bottom you have two tools for um, scaling and also rotating uh, images on, um, on your page. Down below that you have a series of buttons in the footer. You've got edit. Uh, it does um, uh, we'll talk about some of these things. It does some of the common things like cut, copy, and paste, duplicate, duplicate, and paste. Um, right next to that you've got a range, and a range allows you to do things like uh, send things to the back um, or align left, align objects on your page. Path allows you to do things that are fairly common with vector-based applications like add anchor points, delete anchor points, join paths, outline strokes. Uh, we'll actually do uh, the second from the bottom, create outlines from text. We'll do that to actually put a nice outline around our uh, text that we put on our illustration here in a minute. Right next to path you've got two undo buttons here and you can see I'm undoing those previous deletes and they bring back uh, whatever you do depending on um, which undo you select. Next to that on the, on the right, starting on the right, we've got the letters A there and that's all your font selection uh, tools. You've got shadow and opacity controls. We'll talk a little bit about that when we start drawing. You've got your line controls, so the types of line lines that your paths um, sh um, create can be determined through this menu. You've got your colors and your gradients um, for your fills. 
and then you've got your color palettes here or your swatches that you can create if you're creating something custom with some custom swatch colors or you want some uniformity between drawings you might create a custom palette and then use that palette through all the drawings that you create to create some uniformity and then finally um, a vector based drawing program wouldn't be out wouldn't be without layers so layers allows you to put different parts of your drawing on different layers so that uh, you can kind of separate them and they don't uh, even though that uh, it's one drawing they don't interfere with each other when you're editing them or creating them so what we're going to do is we're going to draw a little logo here and we'll do this for summer so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the circle tool I'm going to put my finger down on my canvas and I'm going to start dragging out the circle and you'll notice it's not um, equal width is like more like an oval but if I put my second finger down on the on the screen now you see that it's constrained to complete a uh, circle and it's not an oval so I'm going to make that about that size there and let go you can see my fill color was blue I'm going to move that and center it and um, what I'm going to do is this is just going to be the outline for my logo and I don't need the fill so I'm going to get rid of the fill so I select the uh, fill color there and I can select none up at the top and then I'm going to go to the line tool and then I'm going to give this uh, line tool a little bit bigger than a 0.5 width. I'm going to make it. So there's my uh, my outline for my my logo logo there. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new layer because that was layer one. We drew that on layer one. We can rename that layer and we can call that outline. And then I'm going to create another layer and this is going to be my layer for text. So th the next layer is going to be my text layer we can rename that text so we keep those straight now I should be in my text layer it is the one highlighted I'm gonna select my uh, text tool and I'm gonna drag out a box here and then I'm gonna type some text in there so uh, um, awarded Queen Beaches so I put that text in there I can rearrange that text what I want this text to actually do is I want this text to wrap around the inside of this circle and curve around so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach this text to a circle and it's gonna follow that at one point and I'm gonna select my arrow tool and see that I got my text selected then I'm gonna go to the second arrow with the plus sign because I'm gonna select more than one object so you'll notice that the text is still selected so awarded for championing the cause for clean beaches that text is still highlighted I'm gonna select that second circle that I drew with the thinner line now they're both selected now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to path and I'm going to place text, it's the bottom selection here, place text on the path. And you'll notice now my text is actually on that path. So then I can actually change the color of my text. Maybe I want my text to be a little bit uh, more colorful than just black. I can go over to my uh, colors and I can select maybe a gradient. That looks good. And then what I can do is we'll come back to this in a minute but I'm gonna outline that text so it kinda pops out especially where it's a little bit yellow on the right side of the logo Now I'm gonna draw a circle here another circle and we're gonna make this filled with a solid color so I'm gonna change it from a gradient to a color and we want this color to be blue so that looks good and move this circle up into here because this is gonna represent say the ocean now to split this in half what I'm going to do is select the scissors tool and I'm going to I'm going to touch with my finger right on the two midpoints of the circle and that pretty much splits that circle in half so I'm selecting the arrow tool now I'm going to select on the top part of the circle and then I'm just going to hit delete and you'll notice now we've got half a circle so now we'll make a little wave in here so I'm going to select my pen tool and I'm going to go ahead and create a wave something like so that looks good and then what I'll do now is we'll go ahead and take and uh, move that over a little bit more I want to show you another thing you can do with uh, ink pad and the brush tool so we've got our wave in there now I need like a surfer or something in the middle so I'm gonna go to Flickr real quick I'm gonna find me a picture that I know I have of a surfer looked at this here so um, you may or may not know when when you've got an image displayed on your browser you can hold your finger down there and you can usually copy or save that image to your 
pictures. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm just going to take a screenshot of this picture. So some of you may or may not know you can actually, anything on your iPad screen, you can save as a photo uh, into your, your photo collection. So you hold your uh, top button up at the top of your iPad and you hold the power button and it kind of snaps uh, a picture of that. And now if we go back to InkPad, you'll see that up here at the top, in the very top right, we've got this little picture of uh, photo albums. We can go into our camera roll and we can select a picture here. And I'm going to cut this because, again, I forgot to put this on a separate layer. So let me cut that, create another layer. We'll call this Photos. Make sure I stay in that layer. And then we'll go ahead and paste that photo in here. I'm going to rotate this so that it is this way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little bit bigger because it needs to be a little bigger. And I'm going to zoom in here on the surfer. And then I'm going to make another layer here. This is going to be surfer body and then I'm going to use the brush tool over here and I'm going to actually just trace trace this surfer's outline so starting at their head I go around and we'll stop right there and then I'm going to make another layer here make sure I'm in that layer and then I'm going to hide the surfer layer so I don't see that, and I'm going to use the brush tool again. Let me zoom this back in a little bit more so I see the whole surfboard. And then we'll start down here at the bottom, and we'll just trace the surfboard. Okay. Now I'm going to change the color. We'll make this, actually I'm going to make it uh, fill none, but we'll give it a line width. And we've got the surfboard there. We can go ahead and get rid of the photo now, or at least hide it. And we'll turn the other one on. And we'll go to this one. Select that surfer. Change its fill color. Maybe we'll give it a gradient. There's a green, blue, green gradient here. So that, and then something like that. That looks nice. And then for the surfboard, maybe we will give this a fill, a fill of white. And you notice the surfboard now is kind of on the wrong layer. So if I was going to reposition this, I could do that through my Layers window. And on the far right of the Layers window, next to the little square colors, you'll notice those three lines. That's for repositioning your layer. So if you touch that with your finger and drag down, you'll notice the layer moves around. So I'm going to put that right underneath the surfer's body. And then I'm going to scroll this thing down a little bit. And that looks pretty good. The last thing I think I will do is um, show you how you can change your text or, or create outlines from your text. So we're going to go ahead and create outlines. And then what you can do at this point is you can select, let's zoom in here, each one of these and we'll give it a outline. And don't worry about um, selecting the whole word. You don't really have to, or the whole letter, I should say. You just need a piece of it, because some of these letters have holes, you know, the middle part of the A or the middle part of the E. But as long as you get one part of it, like we did there with the E, and select color, you should get the uh, outline that you're looking for on your letters. So at this point, we could save this or send it. Um, if we, um, we could save it to the drawings or email it. So I'm going to go to Gallery, and then here and select this and then I believe if you do it through the Dropbox or email it should give you yes it gives you the option for the format so again remember if you're saving it as a P JPEG or a PNG 
you're not going to be able to edit any of the layers. It's going to flatten that image, and you're just going to have a flat image. You won't be able to do much with it in terms of editing it in a vector program. But if you change this and you save it as an SVG file, you could send it to somebody on a computer that has a vector-based drawing program.